When my five times great-grandfather Mikhail arrived in America from Germany in 1767, a clerk wrote his family name as this, with a D. We know that actually the name should have been spelled like this, or as written with an umlauted O instead of OE, like this. Using the dialect of the part of Western Germany from which he came, the name was pronounced Kaler and has been written that way for more than 200 years, at least written by my branch of the family that way. Others have written various other things. One might wonder if there is an easy way of associating all, or at least some, of these spellings of the same name. So Soundex is a tool designed to address this problem. It groups names together based on what they sound like. The goal is to let you cut through the vagaries of spelling over the centuries and find people you might be related to. In one direction, Soundex maps each name to a unique code. As it does that, it throws away information. So if we run Soundex backwards, it maps each code to a set of names. And then it's this composition of the conversion algorithm with its inverse that gives Soundex its power. The two steps, taken together, perform the clustering that we want. Soundex converts an input string, generally a name, of any length to a four-character string. The first character is a letter. It will always be the first letter of the input string. And the remaining three are numbers. The key step in the Soundex conversion algorithm is a mapping from letters to digits. M and N are similar, so they map to the same digit. So are D and T. L and R are distinct enough that they don't share a mapping with anything else. B, P, F, and V share a mapping to 1, and the remaining consonants all map to 2. All the letters that haven't been mentioned yet are going to be thrown away. Let's look at Schaefer as an example. The first thing the Soundex conversion algorithm does is to remove what it considers to be duplicate letters. It removes repeated letters, in this case the second F. It also removes any letter that would map using the consonant conversion step that we just described, but actually hasn't run yet, to the same letter as its predecessor. So, for example, C coming after S. And it removes repeated letters if they are separated by H's and or W's. Next, ignoring the first character, all remaining consonants are mapped as we described earlier. So F becomes 1 and R becomes 6. Next, we're going to remove all the vowels, plus the letters H and W. So we remove H, A, and the two E's. Now we can create the code. We move the original first letter into the first position, so it doesn't actually get converted to a number, although the number it would get if it were converted does play a role in eliminating duplicates. Then we move the 1, and then the 6. We're almost done, except that we're missing the required fourth symbol. Whenever this happens, any remaining slots are simply filled with zeros. If the original name is too long instead of too short, the Soundex algorithm uses just enough from the beginning of the string to fill the four slots in the code. So, for example, suppose the original name was Springbergen. There are no duplicates to remove, so we substitute numbers for the consonants, we get rid of the vowels, and then we fill the code slots with the first four remaining characters and simply throw away the rest. Now we can see how the Kaler family of names, at least all the ones that start with K, get grouped by Soundex. The one repeated letter is removed, the consonants are replaced with numbers, and the vowels go away. Now we can form the code. The first symbol is K, the two numbers come next, and finally we pad with a zero. By the way, there are online tools for running Soundex, so you can do this yourself if you'd like. Just search for Soundex. Soundex is an interesting example of what can happen when we compose a relation with its inverse, when at least one of them isn't a function. In other words, it doesn't necessarily return a unique value. When we apply such a composition to a single value, we will generally get back a cloud, a set of values, 
which, if we've chosen a relation that means something in our domain, may be useful. And Soundex is useful and has been for many years. Its original patent issued in 1918. Of course, it plays an important role in genealogical research, and it's used as a way to index some federal census data. It's embedded, for example, in commercial database systems, such as SQL, and for example, some states use it to generate driver's license numbers. Of course, SoundX as described here isn't a perfect phonetic matching system. There are other variants of SoundX, and there are other different systems. Just search for phonetic encoding algorithm, and you'll find others that may be better suited for various purposes.